Hi everyone, in this video we are going to review and demonstrate the main access settings in your custom Scope ServiceNow application. These settings allow you to tightly control which other applications in the same ServiceNow instance have access to the data and resources in your app. Further, if your app requires resources and data in other custom scoped applications, I'm going to show you what you need to do to develop and deploy the application so the app has the access to the resources that it needs. So let's get started. Let's first clarify what settings there are. The best place to start for this is the documentation. This page here provides an excellent summary of the levels of access that you can configure. The first level of access is at the application level. The second at the individual table level and third, restricted caller access privileges permit you to specify all the way down to a specific script, which script, which resource has access to your table, to your field, and further, which individual operations are permitted. The first thing I'm going to do is open ServiceNow Studio and my application and go to the application settings file here. This setting here, runtime access tracking, will specify if requests to data and resources in my app will be logged or not. By default, it's set to tracking, which means logging will take place. You can also set it to enforcing, which means that uh, each request will need to be individually approved. We're not going to talk about restricting table choices here because that is for developers of this application and what tables they are able to see and use in the configuration of this app. This is also related to this related list down here called design access. If you create a new record in here, you can actually explicitly define which other applications uh, developers of this app uh, have access to. The next thing I'll do is open up the table for the loaner request and go to my application access settings. So every table by default contains these settings and by default accessible from is set to all application scopes and can read is set to true. In other words, other applications will have read access to data in this table. If you want to explicitly reject any access from any other application to data in this table, uh, you can set it to this application scope only. So by default, this setting here, allow configuration, is set to false. Now this field actually controls whether some configuration objects in other application scopes can base their configuration on this table right here. So the way it's set right now, if I go to a sample business rule here that I've created in another application called Training App, if I come here, I've got access to the learner request table. However, if I come to a UI action in the same app, uh, I don't have access to that table because that allow configuration setting has not been selected. Um, alternatively, if I go to a flow, uh, similar to a business rule, I've got access to that table from outside of it. If you go to the documentation to this page here, it does actually specify some configuration objects uh, that are restricted if uh, that setting uh, allow configuration is unselected. So if I were to come back to my application record and enable allow configuration, and go back to my UI action, uh, you will see here that that table is now accessible. Okay, the next thing we're going to do in my application, or specifically for this table here, is allow updates here from configuration objects from outside my application, okay? And I'm also going to set caller access to caller tracking. So when this is set, or when actually the previous setting none was set, this will actually permit all read and update access, write access uh, to data in this table from outside this application scope. What tracking does is actually just log that call from the, the calling application object and specify exactly what uh, access was required. We'll see this in a moment. And then before I do my test, I'm going to run an invalidate cache uh, method here. This will actually clear the, the settings that we just came from because some of those settings are actually cached. So I just want to make sure that the new settings are being used and not the ones that are cached. I've got a table here called learner requests. Uh, so I've got four records here. Uh, these are all open at the moment. 
Okay. And we're going to perform some tests on this table. First test I'll do is with a scheduled script. Uh, it's a read access test here. So it's actually just seeing whether we can actually read one of those records, uh, irrespective of which one. And the second test I've got is for write access as well. And this one is going to attempt to pick up an open record and close it. So it's actually attempting to read records first and then write and update that record. Okay. I've put in some log statements in the script. So if I just come to my log file here and then refresh, we can see that the read script was successful. Um, it picked up a loaner record with a state of 13, uh, which is open, some state of open. And uh, the second scheduled script testing write access was also successful because it picked up one of those records, actually the same one, and has closed at that state three equals closed. Okay, so in other words, we've granted access to another application scope um, where those scheduled scripts are located, and it's been able to read and write to data in my learner request table. So let's see what else we've created here with that test. If we go to our cross scope privileges table here and refresh, we've actually created two records here that have defined access for read and write operations for the training application to our learner request scope and specifically to that table. If we go to another table here called restricted caller access privileges, because we've, because we've set the table uh, access to caller tracking, that has actually created these three entries here. So read uh, is permitted for the first script and read and write for the second script. So in contrast to the table we just came from, which was a more general definition or uh, permissions table for which applications can access the learner request application and the, the table in it. Here we can see specific access has been granted for a specific object, for a specific table, and a specific operation. Okay, if we open up the one here for write, for example, we can see here uh, that a schedule script has been specified, but you can also here uh, define other uh, sources, so other uh, configuration objects that have been granted access. But in our case, it's just a schedule script and that script in particular that I just tested. So that script has write permissions. We can see here the status is allowed to our loaner request table in the loaner request application scope. Now, what if I'm the application administrator for the loaner request application and I don't want to permit write operations from this particular script. Well, I can change the setting here to the status here to denied, but I'll need to do one more thing to restrict access here, to actually enforce that. And that is to come back to the table settings here and change the caller access setting from caller tracking to caller restriction. So a log will still be generated, but it's actually going to enforce now uh, the rules that are set in that previous table, in the restricted caller access privilege table. Okay, so even though we've granted update permissions here, we're actually going to defer uh, to that other table for to see you know which uh, applications, which application objects specifically have been granted access or not. If I come back to my learner request table here, I've in the meantime performed another test uh, which has deleted another record. So at the moment we are left with two open learner request records. So I'll come back to my write access schedule script again that's located in the training app. Execute that. Have a look at my log files here and we can see that the state is 13 which is actually still open. So remember that state three is closed complete and it hasn't been able to do it this time because we've prevented access, we've denied access explicitly to that scheduled script. And if we come back to our learner request table and refresh here, we still have two records. So now if I come back to that same record that prevented access in the restricted caller access privileges table, uh, open up that record 
and change the status here from denied back to allowed, save it, and then run that invalidate cache script again. So we just flush the cache. Okay, so it picks up those settings. We'll run that script again. And if I refresh the page here, then we've been able again to close one of those records. So that's been a very simple demonstration, but enough to demonstrate the power of this capability. So we can use cross scope privileges as well as restricted caller access to really define which application scopes, which objects in those application scopes can actually do what in which object in our own application. Extremely powerful and it's a very powerful tool that you should employ in your own applications. So let's take a look at what it would look like from the other side. So if we were actually the developer of the training app and we wanted access to this learner request uh, table in the learner request application scope, what do we need to do as far as development and deployment so that when we develop this application in a dev instance and we promoted it to another instance, how would that work? How do we actually get the permissions that we need to uh, for our own application to function as designed? So as we've seen, as we've wanted access to those records in that loaner request table and with those table settings configured on the loaner request table uh, the system has generated cross scope privileges uh, records two of them for read and write and also those three corresponding uh, restricted access uh, privileges uh, as well and if we take a, a look at this record here we can see that this record or these records are actually located in the loaner request application scope. Okay, so what we need to do as developers in the training app is get those restricted caller access privileges records, put them into our own application, and then deploy them. Okay, this is real easy to do. Let's take a look. So what we need to do in our training app record here, we need to come down, and I'm viewing this record not in studio because these related links here uh, are not visible there. So I'm just viewing this in the regular platform UI interface. We need to click on this link here, generate RCA privileges in current app. So in other words, those three records that we generated, okay, we need to basically copy them over into our own application. So I'm gonna click on that. And now if I come back to studio here, this is the same record actually without the related links. But if I go to my application files here now, we can see those first three records are actually the same three records that we saw but were located in the learner request application. Okay, so if we open up one of these records now, we can see the application has been set to training app. Okay, now what this record is, this is not a real uh, restricted caller access privilege record as noted right at the top in red here on this record. Okay, but what we can do is package that in our own application, deploy it, and in the other instance, once the application is installed, the system will automatically generate from these records real RCA records for the administrator of the loaner request application to review and approve. Okay, so let's do that next. So in the absence of an application repository or some really nice DevOps pipeline, I'm going to do this the old school way. In other words, I'm going to package my application as an update set in one instance and then import it into my other instance using the retrieved update sets table. So I will save that as an update set and then come to my update set table here and record and then export to XML. Okay, and as we can see here, we can see that this application contains those restricted caller access privileges records. Okay, okay, so now I'm on my other ServiceNow instance. I've uploaded the update set and I'm just about to commit it. Okay, in other words, I'm going to install this application. So the first thing I can do here is to come to my cross scope privileges table, refresh it, and we can see we've got those two. Um, records uh, created here now that have granted access from my application to the loaner request application. But if those table settings that we saw earlier are the same 
um, here in this instance, then we're going to need more than these settings here. Okay, we're going to need to reference those restricted caller access privileges uh, records. So if I refresh this list here, we can see we've got those three records here now. Okay, um, one read for the read scheduled job and a read and a write for the write scheduled job. And pay attention to the status field here. It doesn't say allowed, it says requested. So that is the default behavior. So at the moment, my application won't be able to have read and write access to the loaner request table. So we are dependent now on the uh, loaner request administrator, application administrator, to come to these records and individually review them and approve them. So I'll do this now, for example, for the right record. Okay. And you can see here it's in the loaner request application scope. So if I'm not the application administrator, if this is somehow being restricted, um, then I won't be able to change this as the uh, administrator or developer of my training app. You know, I'll need to ask the loaner request administrator to do this. Okay. But because I haven't uh, enforced that here and I'm the system administrator, uh, I'm going to come here and then just um, change the, the status here uh, from requested to allowed. And I'll quickly fast forward here and do, the, do that for the remaining two applications. Okay, so now that we've been granted access, we should be able to test our read and write scheduled scripts and they should behave just the same way as on our other instance. So I'll go ahead and execute my read access script first and come to my logs here, refresh, and we can see here we've been granted read access because we've been able to retrieve the state and the number. All right, let's go ahead and test our write scheduled job here. We'll come here to our log and we can see here, if I just uh, sort this, uh, that we've been given write access because the state actually of that same loaner request that we just read has now been changed to three, close complete. All right, and if I come to my list of loaner requests here and just refresh this list, we did have 10 records, open records that is, uh, but now we only have nine. So there you have it, everyone. I hope you found this demonstration helpful. These application and table security settings aren't as well known as traditional security capabilities in the platform like access control rules. However, I hope this video has proven to you just how important and powerful they are in locking down and securing your application. Remember, your application is coexisting on a platform with many other apps. And don't assume that these apps are secure. And don't just by default accept the security settings that are there and open up your application to uh, other applications on the platform. As an app administrator and developer, you need to be extremely security conscious about what data, what resources you make available to other applications and only grant access to resources and data that are absolutely necessary. And I hope this video has demonstrated the capabilities of the platform that allow you to do just that. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.